like for myself and most of the people I work with, that's sort of the advice that I give, just go with what's going to work for you. Going back to... Yeah. Yeah. Going back to... Um, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want any comments. So. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. <laughs> you mentioned something with um, starting around 12, but like you still work out in the morning, right? You, you have your classes and you do your workouts or, or like when you're not eating, you don't work out. How does that work? Uh, I work out like randomly. Like my no two days are ever really the same for me. So I'll just squeeze in a workout when whenever. Like I don't have like a set time or routine i like to sort of go with the flow a little bit um but generally i will try and train when i'm fasting and you feel do you feel good like do you feel yeah. energized yeah 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 i feel really good yeah i feel like that too yeah yeah um because i don't know if there's a i, I think nowadays that people are talking more about eating less or at least eating at the right times when they're hungry like yeah. i think we're breaking that stigma but a lot of people feel like you should wake up and and put something in yeah yeah i think that you just have to go with whatever works like for some people they'll eat their dinner during the day or like eating later at night or you you just have to think about what's going to fit into your lifestyle and, and and people working different hours some people were doing night shifts so there's no wrong, in my opinion, there's no wrong or right way to eat. You just should, what's going to fit in for you and your family and your social life? Like, that's number one. Mm. Unless, you know, you're training for like a bodybuilding competition or you're an athlete, like different story. But like for myself and most of the people I work with, that's sort of the advice that I give. Just go with what's going to work for you. Do people who come to you, do they care about like counting calories and all this? Is it, is it common for people come to you and say, oh, I actually want to get this right with my eating and my trainings? Or yeah, you? yeah, definitely. Like I'm a big advocate for um, counting calories, but not in the sense like to become obsessed with it, but more like of a tool and to educate yourself on what foods have um, high calories and low calories like a lot of the time like foods that are labeled like health foods are actually really really high in calories energy dense hey? yeah and depending on what your goals are like if your goal is to get healthier and have more energy then go for it but 99 percent of the time people want to lose weight people want to trim down a little bit so I sort of get them to start learning about what foods, you know, have high calories and low calories. And they're like, oh, I can have an apple and that's only like 80 calories. Or the smoothie that they're having every morning is like 600 calories and like, shit, that's <laughs> like <coughs> a lot of calories <laughs> yeah. for one meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you are you good with, with your control, like of... of your calories and what you do yeah. or you, you kind of oh, yeah. I, I, yes i did it for um <laughs> i did it for a long time like through the app my fitness pal mm. um and now i can sort of like guess Just, at, yeah, yeah like it could be like oh well that's 400 calories or that's not going to be much or like that was a lot of calories so you can sort of start estimating once you've done it for so long like it would just be like Second nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like someone else. Like I'm trying to think of an example of, like, oh, but like a chef that knows how to cook without a recipe. So, um, yeah. What, it, what 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 is a like a, a nasty one that you wouldn't think that is that caloric, and then when you oh, check, yeah. you're like hidden like, calories, mm. secret ones. Oh, anything that's high in fat, really, like butter, like butter and potato chips like you know the little mm. snack size kids ones they're like oh off the top of my head like 200 calories just for like a tiny little bag it's like eight chips yeah <laughs> yeah basically yeah eight chips yeah and you're like man i'm still hungry <laughs> so yeah anything that's like fried like deep fried like yeah deep fried 
Do you try to foods. do you try to stay away, Lana, from from deep fried Eat chips? Uh, chips? Um, do you like chips? I don't really try and stay away from anything. Really, I just eat what yeah, I feel no. like at the time. Yeah, same. Neither. Um, but I don't. I I also like to feel really great, and so I normally eat lots of greens and not much fried foods. But sometimes, yeah. Indulging. Is yeah. it indulging though? Yeah, because it, it triggers things in our brains that that. There's yes. that yeah. feeling of like, oh, this is amazing. Have but you heard of the um, milkshake experiment? Oh, My milkshake I'm, I'm curious now. I'm even going to grab a piece of pizza. So, um, <laughs> listen to the milkshake I can't remember <laughs> who did the study. It was like either Killies. like Harvard or Stanford, and they had two groups of people, and they gave, oh, they must have had the same group of people, and on one occasion they gave them this milkshake. And they said this is a low calorie <laughs> shake, like it's it's not really going to fill you up, etc. And then they gave the same people a different milkshake. I, don't, I might be getting the story wrong, but it will come together at the end. And they told these people it's a really high calorie milkshake. It's really decadent. It's like indulgent. And the people that got the like low calorie um, shake the hormone that tells you you're like still hungry um was elevated mm -hmm. and then the group that got told they had a high calorie drink their hormone um levels to say that they're full i think it's um it's leptin gre yeah yeah, yeah some ghrelin ghrelin oh, gre yeah that level went up but in reality the two milkshakes were exactly the same so just by telling yourself, like, for instance, eating this pizza, <coughs> um, you can be like, oh, this is such a treat. This is going to be so yum. Um, it'll send off, like, a chemical reaction in your brain to not eat as much. Whereas if, like, there was, like, a chicken salad, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to eat heaps. But then 10 minutes later, you'll be like, oh, I'm still hungry. Because those same chemical reactions haven't, ha ha like, started in your brain. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's like my mum always says, what, eat whatever you want, but don't feel guilty about it. Yes. Because that, mm. and the milkshake experiment to me speaks to that. Yeah. Because it's like you, we actually control the pharmacy that's inside our yes. bodies with our yeah. thoughts as yeah. much yeah. as it's almost equal to the actual yeah. chemistry of the food yeah. involved, which is crazy. Yeah, it's like but true. Yeah. It's like yeah. how powerful we are. Yeah. The, so what yeah. you think is so influences everything yeah. and yeah. what you eat. I've never heard the milkshake experiment oh, before. Oh, yeah, it's I probably amazing. like totally stuffed up the story. But if you Google the milkshake experiment. But basically that's the thing, right? It yeah. was the same milkshake. They told them it was yes. different. Yeah. And their bodies and reacted, differently, reacted differently. Physiologically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like that whole placebo yeah. effect. It's so real. Yeah, yeah. As is the nocebo effect. Yes, yeah. Which is when you believe, like, you've got six months to live. Mm. Boom. Then that's it. It might be it. Yeah. That might be. Yeah. You just watched to an old base show clip. If you want to watch the full show or if you want to see us live, subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications about our live streams. We do it three times per week, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. And if you are more of a listener, go to altbase.nz to find out on which main podcast platforms we're on. Peace.